Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another episode of CSK News. All the stories we have in today's episode will be time marked down below. So hope you guys all enjoy and thank you all for the great support on this week's videos. We've been uploading every single day and I seriously appreciate you guys very much for commenting down below. Now first off, I do want to tell you all that we pretty much know what the new Navi lineup is going to be like, but this is speculation going forward. Nothing 100% confirmed, but I can point you guys in the right direction as to who I think and who I truly believe will be replacing some people on Navi and who that new roster will be composed of. So first off, on their fan page, I vk.com we did have C's tweet out this or actually post this on their fan page while a couple days ago just the number four so it seemed a couple days ago or just uh, early yesterday they were already down to four members we, no one else really knew or had any speculation as to why he did post this and then we also had simple on stream he said something very curious and I'll give you guys that right now the clip of simple saying this it is in Russian though so for all of you guys who know but I'll translate that for you guys after you hear it and I got you And that was actually simple saying he's taking over the op. He is going to be the new main opera for Navi, which makes many people out there think, okay, that means Guardian's going to be replaced. And everything else, uh, you know, after this, guys, actually lines up with this. So we also had simple. Keep in mind, guys, he tweeted out this to Gambit a couple days ago as well, shortly after the major. He said, Gambit. Don't change any of your players. So keep that in mind as we as we go forward as well because we also have Zeus's manager for the Pro 100 organization. If you remember, a long time ago, Zeus started his own CSGO organization, hopefully for other esports in the future. He's the president of that. This guy on screen is actually the manager for that. He also has close ties to Zeus. He tweeted out this saying that we will have the we will know the CIS shuffles by the end of the week. And he also this morning tweeted out this as well. A very important key hint here because it is just speculation, but it does line up with just a about everything we need because we have of course if Guardian is replaced by simple for the opping role they need a new IGL for because seized no longer wants to be an IGL so that means that by this tweet you know we have the big yellow giant being Navi and the little uh, red Hellboy being Hellraisers and Hellraisers IGL being Angel that means of course that we will have Angel going to Navi he'll be their new IGL simple their new op and seized Edward and Flamey will stay to finish out that roster this is just speculation going forward but if it is right that is pretty Pretty crazy news. So I'll link those tweets down below for all of you. And we're gonna move on to Cloud9 apparently renegotiating contracts. The guy on screen for all of you is known as Mini Kerr. He's a smaller streamer out there. Actually leaked a conversation just early yesterday uh, about automatic talking to him about Cloud9 apparently renegotiating contracts. If you guys look closely at the screenshots there as well, they also mention a number about twenty-five thousand dollars a month. People out there thinking two different things because that is pretty close to what Virtus Pro players make, as well as we have NIP players who make around two hundred thousand dollars plus as well. 25k a month equates to $300,000 salaries per year for Cloud9 members. It seems a bit strong, but this also could be, you know, just a thought out there. This also could be a stunt by Automatic. We've had we've had Stewie do this in the past where he knows people are streaming. He knows people are watching the conversations on Steam. This could be a stunt by Cloud9 to maybe draw in bigger money from Cloud9, but it is very clear as of right now that Cloud9 is renegotiating contracts. Some people are saying this is actually why they took the month of August off from no competition to actually figure out their contracts with their team and who actually wants to sign them. So Cloud9, I honestly have to say here, guys, you can you can say a high percentage-wise that it will be Cloud9 to re-sign these guys, but there are definitely other organizations out there who probably have interest, but do they have the money to afford them? That's the real question. They wouldn't have to be bought out right now because their contracts are apparently ending, so that'd be really cool to see, but I think Cloud9 is currently renegotiating contracts for some high-value money, and it will apparently also be a long-term contract. And also in some other very exciting news, AZK is apparently back from the Overwatch seen for the time being. He was seen with this screenshot on screen, guys. He was actually scrimming and pugging with uh, Cloud9 swag a lot yesterday, and I actually had a lot of you guys get offended in the comment section when I mentioned that the Overwatch scene was dying and so AZK could come back. Please, if you guys are Overwatch fans, let me know what I'm missing down below because I seriously have high doubts for the longevity of the actual tournament scene prize pool wise for the Overwatch scene affording uh, these pro players to actually have a living playing Overwatch. Now, I know the, the actual player base is growing. It's doing a great job, but please tell me if I missed something. I know I I offended a lot of you guys and I do apologize for that so leave a comment down below what I actually missed about that now also we had Hiko on stream all day yesterday gave us a lot of information the first of which is if you guys did not know one of his team rogue members now they currently only have four members going forward but it does seem that you know we actually had misfits release Skylar yesterday as well so it seems he could be their fifth member but going forward for ESL Pro League season six their current member Wrath is only 15 years old there's an age restriction of I believe it's age 16 on ESL Pro League so for 
for the first month. Luckily, his birthday is actually a month in the Pro League. He actually needs a sub for him, and he can't play the first four matches for Team Rogue. So kind of an unfortunate thing there. He's obviously one of their good players. He was already signed to the, the first four. So Wrath will be out for the first four weeks, it does seem like. So they're going to be actively looking for replacements. How cool would it be if people like Swag or Dazed or maybe even Steel or AZK stood in for Team Rogue for the first four weeks? We could see how good and showcase their talent there. But also on top of that, we do have um, some other potentials out there. You know, Freakazoid is also back to the CSGO scene. Many of you guys thinking that Freakazoid will join Team Rogue. I highly, highly doubt it. From what I've been told, it's not likely because Freakazoid, you know, albeit the doubters out there, he actually has a pretty high talent pool, uh, a pretty high talent ceiling, and he can probably demand a, a better team than Team Rogue. But going forward, Team Rogue does need a new fifth, and it does seem for the first four weeks of ESL Pro League, they will be down one guy, and we'll need a sub for that as well. And I do apologize, guys, for the quick intermission here, but I do want to thank all of you. Sorry, I'm in my, I'm in my kitchen right now. Thank you to all of you guys who have used my CSGO swap link down below. They have been treating me so nicely, and if you guys hear noises, it's because dog number one. Oh yeah, we got dog number two and three, and there's a there's a fourth dog here, so I'm, I'm dog sitting right now. Um, stop making noises, okay? I want to thank you all of you guys who have used my CSGO swap link down below. They treated me so nicely, and just yesterday we actually broke 600 users, which is insane to think about. Thank you guys very much for that, and for all you OP skin squad people out there, I don't forget about you guys either, so sorry for the intermission, and back to the Hiko stuff. And I thought it was very curious as well, because rumors did say, of course, Hiko said it himself, he was actually offered Evil Geniuses. I told you guys a few days ago, yes, Evil Evil Geniuses did offer Hiko and other teams out there, but all those offers did fall through. So Evil Geniuses is likely to never have a CSGO team, at least nowhere in the near future at all. Not even, not even for, not even, you know, not even a thought in my mind anymore. But it does seem as well Hiko was offered by a top North American team. Rumors said it was actually Cloud9, and Hiko declined that offer because he didn't want to take away just one member's spot who's been there for a long time just because a team wants him on the come up. So that was pretty crazy to think if it was Cloud9 or any top North American team out there. They were willing to replace one of their long-term members just to have Hiko get a shot. Now, also on top of this, in brighter news, we actually had KNGV, the guy for Immortals who was actually on trial the entire major. His first ever major with the team, and his first two months with the team, he makes a freaking major, replacing FNX, obviously a superior Brazilian player there, coming from uh, SK Gaming. He replaces him on that lineup, still a trial member throughout the major, of course, then finishing second to Gamut Gaming at the major. He has now cemented his spot in the team. With that post, he has now obviously made his full-time role in that team so that congrats to him and that is freaking cool I actually looked at a picture of this guy this guy is the same age as me like maybe a year older but he looks like he looks so much more mature and intimidating than I do and on top of that guys one last thing the community question for today's episode thank you guys for submitting these questions down below in the comment section this guy asked me a couple different videos what is happening with efrag 2k17 if you guys do not know efrag they host the world championships TWC every single year uh, they usually have a different partner every single year as well or they actually had a long-term partner partner with a Zubu. So if you guys do not remember, we actually had them partner up with a Zubu just last year and they are still giving out prize money eight and a half months later. So TW, uh, TWC 2017, I'm not sure it's going to happen. Now, I'm sure it will. It's only a $100,000 prize pool, so I'm sure someone will actually sponsor it out there, but I'm not sure what EFRAG's stance on that is. They had this post on Twitter as well. Because if you guys remember, they actually partnered up with Azubu last year. Azubu apparently went broke, even though they just bought out the streaming service Hitbox. So there was a huge conflict there. Prize money still being paid out. So I hope TWC will still happen this year. It's great to see all those nations have these players from different teams come together. It's a very fun thing to watch. And it's also only a $100,000 prize pool. So hopefully it will happen in the future, but no guarantees that EFREG will be the host of that unless they can find a very solid sponsor. Now, hope you guys all enjoyed today's episode of CSGO News. If you guys did, please do a comment down below. It is so early right now. I am so tired. I'm just going to go hit up the comment section and reply to all of you guys. Hope you all enjoyed. Live, love, laugh a lot. Remember, I like you. Yes, a yelling outro is coming, so please turn down your headsets. Uh. <laughs>